may have seen pictures of a huge crash in qualifying, uh, first qualifying, Alex Danielsson of Sweden, uh, who broke an ankle sadly, but uh, involved in a big smash, which actually involved several cars, including the main reason for, for the accident, effectively Colin Fleming was stranded on the circuit, um, broke down and just over the crest of a hill, very blind and very hard. Uh, the marshals did a great job of, of stopping things as quickly as possible, but unfortunately uh, it is a blind crest and uh, one of the drivers um, who will not be taking part, in fact the whole team, the inter team, uh, Daniel La Rosa and uh, Stefano Proeto, uh, Proeto particularly crashed into Danielson and unfortunately um, caused the accident which Danielson now will not be here. I'm glad to say he's here at the circuit and he's okay and I'm sure he'll be getting as fit as he can to join the rest of the season. It's a long series ahead. We start here in Zolder in Belgium. We head then next to Monaco, which is very exciting. It's going to be on the undercard of Formula One. Valencia, Le Mans, uh, Bilboa in Spain, Oschersleben in Germany, Donington, Estrel and Monza. Some, some pretty tasty circuits in many ways. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the cars they will be really close uh, with the Formula One cars in Monaco because they don't have the groove tires and uh, that makes also a difference with the GP2 series and therefore they, I think they are quicker than the GP2 series. GP2 series get much more horsepower but uh, they cannot uh, get those speeds in the corners so it's, uh, it's really a nice championship and also the budget is quite nice for the drivers to drive here. It's, it's less than a Formula 3 budget sometimes so therefore we have a big starting grid. We have uh, 28 cars and that's uh, really nice for, uh, for the sponsors, for the media and uh, it's good for the championship. Well, like I said, this is a brand new concept. It's never been done before, and I have to take my hat off to RPM and Renault, who've done a superb job of putting this weekend together and the whole series together. And it's the concept that I like, which is it, it brings back the fans into motor racing, which I think, sadly, in, in some regions has gone away, but it seems to be very much back and at the forefront here. You've got fun fairs, you've got all sorts going on throughout the weekend, and it really is a family and people-involving uh, event. We see number four car is not on the grid at the moment. Uh, I hope uh, it's Will Power who must be normally on the grid, and he's not. So I hope it. Well, it was absolute disaster then for Will Power because he is pole position for race two. The Carlin man. We're hoping that Trevor Carlin will come up here, but I would have thought if he's got uh, things on his hands like the fact that Will Power is not on the grid or is possibly at the back of the grid. We'll find out more about that in a moment. But uh, that is not good news for him if that's the case. Uh, it's qu quite nice. Uh, I'm a Belgian driver, but I, I don't drive so often in Belgium and uh, certainly not in Zolder. Normally it's always Spa Francorchamps, but I've never seen so many people today at the track. It's really, it's going to be around 100,000 people. It's going to be uh, the biggest event of the year for Zolder. And like I said, uh, it's exciting times because, as you know, Zolder used for Formula One back in the 70s and uh, early 80s, and of course then it stopped the uh, track considered probably too small and, and I suppose Belgian fans are harping, are hopeful that the, this sort of racing and we had over 50,000 here last year uh, can give them what they want because it's so close to Formula One. There are Belgian drivers out there. We've got a, a young 18 year old Vavesh uh, out there who's uh, going to have a real experience out there. He's never driven anything like this and uh, not easy. <laughs> no, it's for sure not easy. The, the, uh, they're going to start the engine. It's a one minute board. So then we have a missing Position four on the grid for race one. But we'll find out. No, not missing though, is Enrico Toccacello. Very confident. Says that perhaps the only place to overtake is at the last corner. That's his feeling, but he won't be concerned with that. What he want to do is get ahead early on. And I think the first corner here, and you know this circuit better than any, uh, is going to be the key to this whole race in many ways. If Tocicello can get away early, he can, uh, you know, he can keep away from everyone else. Yeah, we see it's a, it's a narrow straight, so it's going to be really important to take a nice start and hope that the car in front doesn't stall because with the clutch, it's really not easy at all. The first corner is, is really tight and bumpy. So away they go then, Enrique Tocicello leads them off. Andreas Zuba of Austria will follow him. And 28 cars, two missing, remember, the Interveten team not taking part because both their cars were destroyed effectively in the incidents in qualifying one. So those are the only two. And as we go on this for, uh, formation lap, Jeffrey, give us an idea of the circuit. The first, right uh, first left-hander is a... Uh, 
Yeah, he's Fourth a, gear turn and very fast indeed, and so yeah. too is the second corner. It's, it's really tricky, it's bumpy, it's one of the, it's for me the trickiest corner of the track. Then we go to uh, a right-hander, quite tight, and here we see uh, the corner, really important for the back straight, is Bianchi. It's, uh, it's a really quick one, it's just a, a lift for some, in qualifying it's a lift, and in the race it would be a small break. But we saw in practice a lot of uh, cars went off in, in that corner, and then it's always a big shunt. Then and if we they make it through, say through here, they're coming up to the first chicane, and we could have all sorts of problems there, couldn't we? Yeah, it's a, the first chicane is really difficult because uh, it's really quick, and it's uh, uh, some some tricky curbs over there, and uh, it's always the driver who takes the most risk who's going to pass quick to drill, but uh, risk is always uh, tricky as well. This is the place where. Colin Fleming's car was stranded when we had the big accident in qualifying and I'm glad to say uh, no one seriously hurt as I said Danielson not taking part this weekend having broken his ankle in that uh, particular incident but he's okay he's here in the pits and we'll have a word on later. On the formation lap then the first round two races this afternoon this is the effectively sprint race of 19 laps and then we have a second race that will be with a pit stop and of course that's going to be interesting because a lot of the drivers out there will never have experienced that yeah pit stops is always tricky it's also for the team is really stressy situations uh, but it's a good practice for the drivers because of course uh, this is uh, the category for formula one so pit stops is uh, really important to practice this is a great opportunity for Belgian fans because I know just how much they love their motor racing and it's absolutely packed to the girls and everybody's on their feet as they're coming to the last corner here in preparation for the first race. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. We see here the drivers going through the last corner. It's a Jackie X corner. It's quite tight in three and is a fast exit. So then we're about to get underway and as I said it's a brand new era for international motor racing as we start the World Series by Renault. The first race, 19 laps, in pole position, Italian Enrico Toccicello, runner-up from the Formula 3000 Championship last year. Can he dominate in this championship too? It's not going to be easy. Will Power is missing from the grid. That's the biggest news story we've got so far. The man who's pole position for race two is not on the grid. That gives Jap van Lagen perhaps a chance. And likewise, Robert Kubica, who's just behind to get up the grid early on. Tense moments for all these drivers. Is there a delay on the start, we wonder? Five seconds. Up go the engines. The lights go out and away goes Tocicello from pole position. He got a good start, but a better start from Andreas Silva on the outside. Now can he defend his position? Tocicello trying desperately to go into that first corner. A lot of dust as well, kicked up from the crowd. But on that bank on the left-hand side, but everybody safely through into turn two. And it is Enrico Tocicello who managed to brilliantly hold off uh, the challenge of Andreas Zuba into the first corner. Yeah, he was on the better side to go into the first corner, so it was a difficult situation overtake Tocicello. We'll look out to uh, where Monk, Marcus Winkelhock is as well. He is in third place. He did get it in Van Lagen, so it actually as is. Gomendi got a good start, though. Gomendi has come forward from ninth on the grid. He's up to sixth, and that's a good start from Tristan Gomendi, the Frenchman. I was expecting him to come good. He was third here last year, knows the circuit well. As we head down to the fastest part, into the Gilles Villeneuve uh, complex for yeah. the first time, and that is Karun Chandok of India looking to try and get up the grid after not qualifying as well as he wanted. He's down in 23rd. Oh. That was a really tricky, yeah, that, that's not going to go right. We see the yellow flags, it's Jab van Lagen who pushed out Winkelhock. He was too aggressive to overtake him there. We see Tocacello having a gap on uh, Zuber. Van Lagen's fault, you think? Yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was too tricky. You see here Van Lagen who can uh, rejoin the race. Great start to this race, and across the line they come then, Tocicello building on his lead, Zuba second, Kubica, Gomendi, Portero in fifth place, a great start by Portero the uh, Spaniard, Vales likewise, another Spaniard, Adrian Vales in sixth place, Montanari of San Marino is seventh, Fakuda, Rui Fakuda has dropped back to eighth position, Winkelhoff all the way down to ninth, so he's going to be not happy at all by that, it's all going on. Yeah, there was one driver going off there. 
I don't know who it is. It's in the first corner. It was a little bit too aggressive on the brakes. Oh, here we see. Talking of aggression, here we go again. <laughs> Over the hill they come then. Tocicello just putting his head down and starting to move ahead now. A lot of dust being uh, thrown up on this track and it is very dusty. They do motocross around this circuit and it seems to be, as I went around the circuit, a lot of dust and dirt offline. So they've got to be careful because it is slippy out there and there's a yellow flag at turn one now for that incident we saw earlier. So then, well, I guess we got what we wanted there. An exciting start to that. Tocicello perhaps gaining the most out of it. Just at a 126.4, that's the fastest lap. He's already put almost two seconds between him and Andrea Suba of Austria. Early days there, 19 laps, remember. And across the line comes Tocicello again. Let's have a look at his time this time. Two seconds, he's now got a lead over Zuba. Kubica is third, so Robert Kubica, the pole, has got up there. Gomedy fourth, Portero, then Vales. Montanari, Winkelhock is up to eight, Bakuda still ninth. Chandok doing well, he's up to 14 position ahead of Thomas Kosko, who also raced in this championship. Karin Chandok, who did two races here last year, has come in for RC Motorsport and replaces effectively the two men that have gone to Formula One. And Naren Karthikeyan, who rode for, uh, drove for um, RC Motorsport last year, and of course Thiago Montero. There is number 32, who is out, and that is Giovanni Tedeschi who is the teammate of Karun Chandok and even though his name is Tedeschi, he's very much Italian and uh, well, it was he who went off on that first uh, corner as you see. Yeah, we see that uh, Tocacello has got really a nice speed over, he's got a six seconds, uh, a six tenths a lap quicker than uh, Zuber. It's Kubica in third who's really pushing Zuber. Govendi who came from ninth to fourth, it's really nice for him uh, to be maybe uh, in a podium position because it's nice for the Belgium team of course to have uh, for the crowds and the sponsors uh, a good score well we're about to get some exciting racing because at the moment Andreas Zuba is nowhere near as quick as well he's just up the pace uh, on the last lap uh, he wasn't as quick as Kubica and Gomendi and as you just saw Kubica's just put the fastest lap in and so we're going to start seeing some challenging for second place. Tocicello has increased his lead, it's now 2.1 seconds over Zuba, but Zuba is being caught and caught quick by Kubica and Gomendi. Gutierrez and Valles still fifth and sixth, and Montanari of San Marino still in seventh place. Winkelhock has moved up to eighth, so he's gaining some places. There's Tocicello turning in to that left-hander, and uh, as you see, Kubica now all over the back, but where does Kubica try and make a challenge here, or does he try and put forcing into a mistake? Yeah, it's going to be really difficult because those cars, they get a lot of downforce, and that means behind the cars, there is no downforce anymore because there is no clear air, and uh, so you cannot stay close to the car in front of you in the quick corners. So on the back straight, there is really no option. It's only an option uh, when you're coming out of a slow corner, there you can make a move after the straight, and then we have like Tocacello said in the last corner, there is a possibility when you come out of this corner, here at, this, at the end of this straight, there they can make a move, but at the moment Kubica is a little bit too far to, to make a move, because those cars, they get carbon brakes, they brake so late, it's really, it's really difficult to, to overtake. You see some cars going in. Yeah, Tedeschi's coming into the pits as the top six now cross the line again. 121.3 by Tocicelli, so he's up the pace again. And uh, the rest of the field within two or three tenths of him. But uh, he's increasing that lead as the race goes on. Chandok moves up a place to 13th place now. Mondini, big surprise, Mondini, the champion of V6, did not qualify at all well. He's doing better in the race, he's up to 17th now. Eric Salignon, another disappointment, had good testing um, in the winter. He's down in 19th position, just ahead of uh, Vervich, the Belgian driver. 121.3, though, the fastest lap so far for Victory Engineering, Tocicello, runner-up in Formula 3000 last year, and desperate to make his mark here, but very laid back, had a long chat with him last night and very excited about taking part in the championship and the biggest thing for the drivers is the car itself what they love about this car is the way it, it, it's it's very well balanced and all of them have said to me bar none that they can be aggressive and for a racing driver i suppose that's the most important thing yeah we can see the uh, the experience of Tocacello is on on all tires the car is sliding but really gently and zuber is pushing so hard to keep uh, kubica behind him and he's sliding 
really out of the slow corners and, and killing his rear tires. But also for Kubica, it's really difficult to stay behind uh, Zuber because when you stay behind, you use more tires because you, you get no downforce. You need really to use your tires much more. So he needs to make a move in a few laps time, otherwise he cannot make a, a proper move anymore. Well, Tocicello was saying in the press conference that he wanted uh, to get the best out of the tires. He feels that the tires start to go off after just four laps. So, and that's exactly why, uh, after five laps, he's built up a lead now of almost three seconds. And I think that's just the cushion he needed, because if the tires aren't giving him everything he wants, he wants to be in a position to be at least comfortable and then doesn't have to push. Yeah, that is the best way to drive down the tires that will stay until the end of the race. But we see here that um, when Zuber is not going to make a mistake, then for sure Kubica has got no, no possibility to overtake because uh, they are doing the same lap times at the moment. Well, we've had few Polish drivers, plenty of Austrians, of course. Zuber following in their footsteps, but Kubica almost changing the scene of international motorsport in Poland. And he really is fastly becoming a hero. Speedway is the biggest motorsport in Poland at the moment, but Kubica's about to change all that, I think. And he could do it this season. So across the line they come then, a 121.5 from Tocicello. Zuba 121.4, just two tenths quicker than Kubica. So he's up the pace again. So uh, uh, Andreas Zuba doing a very good job of actually just maintaining that gap enough from Robert Kubica to hold on to second place for the moment. Any movers in this one? Gomendi still fourth. Portiero in uh, fifth place. Valed in sixth place, uh, Montanari seventh, Fukuda, Fukuda is eighth, the Japanese driver, Paganiol of France is ninth, and Pile also of France is in tenth place, as somebody, it looks like Eric Salignon, possibly one of the Solonaire cars, has gone off. Uh, that's in the first corner. Well, it looked like he was on his own as well, it just bra braked himself. Uh, it's difficult to see from so far, it's number two. Well... It's, uh, I thought it was uh, selling on its night. It's uh, Menegello, who was in 16th position and fighting with Maldonado. And you were talking about Maldonado yesterday. He's uh, quite impressive, yeah? Yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's a Renault development driver. Uh, I tested together with him with Minardi F1, and he was the first time in the car in four laps time. He was on the pace, so it impressed me quite a lot. But at the moment, he's struggling uh, in this championship. He was quick in free practice, but in qualifying he didn't put a lap together. So it's, uh, at the moment he's running in 15. Well, he's got back running again, but uh, he's out of contention for this one. He wasn't really in contention. You mentioned uh, with 12 laps to go, you mentioned F1 testing. That's what everybody here wants to do, is to go to F1. And there's a few that uh, have test one, uh, Formula 1 test contracts as well. And I think of Fuguda has already had one with BAR. But uh, tell me, how, how important is that to your career? Uh, and will you be able to do some more this year? Well, um, it's important to, to stay in the running in, in this kind of championships, uh, to stay up to speed. Uh, but f uh, at the moment I have quite a lot of experience with three year, uh, four years. Uh, it's already four years that I'm driving Formula 3000. So uh, I will do another test uh, at the end of the season uh, with Minardi. And uh, yeah, let's hope we can, we, because now it's all about budgets to, to get everything uh, sorted out to, to get maybe the third drive with Minardi or maybe for next year even more. So let's hope uh, the sponsors can, uh, can provide uh, the finance. Well, Zuba continues to do a good job with Kubica. Kubica was all over the back of him earlier on, but now number eight from Poland is having to work harder. He was 210 slower than Zuba last lap out. Let's take a look at it this time as Chocicello comes across the line at 122.6. The pace has dropped off uh, just a little bit, except for Kubica, who's upped it to a 129, 121.9. So Kubica on the move at the moment. Watch out for car number eight. Tristan Gomendi still in fourth place. Potero is in fifth. Felix Potero in fifth at the moment. Yeah, at the moment it's only Kubica who's uh, running in the 121s. And we saw that pole position was a 118, so they are running uh, a three seconds, uh, four seconds uh, from pole position. And I think the lap times they will go up now because it's really hot over here. Story so far, Tocicello from pole position got away, got away well, defended brilliantly against Zuba, who got a better start actually off the grid. 
and since he won the battle for the first corner he's now pulled away and has a 2.1 second the big news story van lagen out or at the back of this field and likewise winkelhock uh, because those two came together in a, in a battle in the first couple of laps and Will Power did not start the race, so drama already in the first round of the World Series by Renault. But at the moment, it's Italian Toccacello, Enrico Toccacello, who is leading the way. And of course, you you know, racing against uh, someone like him, uh, he's not gonna, he's not going to give up this lead very easily, is he? No, it's a really professional driver. He's a really focused driver, good concentration. He's got a lot of experience already. So I'm uh, when the car rolls on, uh, what I will think. It's uh, Toccacello will uh, bring this one home. Well, and of course he already picks up a point for taking pole position, and if he can get fastest lap as well, which at the moment is with Van Lagen at 121.062. So uh, work to be done there perhaps, but uh, worth it because there's a point to be had, and uh, Toccacello could get up 15 points for a win and add a 1.4 to his pole position and put himself in a commanding position for race two, which will be a longer 23 lap race with a pit stop. Buy or sell any used car through Automatch. Just call 0870 081 8888. Annoying, isn't it? You're trying to find a way to raise some money, but every path you take seems blocked. Maybe it's your employment status. Or possibly your low credit rating. Or maybe just that you're retired. Whatever your circumstances, Greenhill Finance may be able to point the way. All Greenhill Finance asks is that you're a homeowner looking to borrow between £3,000 and £500,000. Your loan can be for any purpose and repaid over a period of time to suit you. You may even want to consolidate your existing debts. There are no interviews and no salesperson will call. So for that any purpose homeowner loan or remortgage, see how Greenhill Finance can show you the way. Call Greenhill Finance now on 0800 916 4142 or apply online at greenhillfinance.co.uk. In Japanese, you don't say have a dream, you say see a dream. Because what's the point in having dreams if you're not going to make them happen? You may know Shikara. Get set for two hours of high-speed motorcycle racing at its Superbike Best. Join Motors TV tonight from 10pm for the full race replay from Round 4 of the AMA Superbike Championship from the Fontana Road Course in California. Then stay up late because from 11pm we take you to the California Speedway for live coverage of the fifth round of the year. More outstanding motorbike action from Motors TV. And we see here uh, the man in second position is really pushing here through Villeneuve corner. It's a really tight corner, but he's, he's keeping the speed in, in the car. It's just Kubica who is behind. It's a little bit easier when you're driving behind because then you're more confident driving a little bit cleaner and you have less tire work. The tires they stay better on, so um, it's going to be really a stress towards the end uh, for Zuber. Yeah, I noticed on the track itself, it's, uh, it can be very deceptive just to the, just off the track and just wide of the rumble strip. It's really muddy, really sticky. And if you get just a little bit too wide uh, and gather too much uh, dirt and dust on your tires, you can really get yourself in a mess, can't you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really tricky because those cars, they have so much grip. When you come on, uh, on the part of the track where it's really slippery, it can be uh, no grip at all, so that's, um, that's always stay focused for a driver to stay on the, on the good line and just push. But now it's going to be difficult because the tires are going to go off a little bit, so the braking is going to be a little bit more early. 
to be sure to, to don't go too fast into the corners. Well, our time monitors are showing black flag car number four, and that is Will Power, of course, and I uh, don't know what that means. Uh, maybe uh, Trevor Carlin, who I can see now, going up to race control, trying to have a word. Busy man, Trevor Carlin, running a Formula One team, as well as running this team, and Formula Three, and BM, Formula BMW. He's a busy man. But uh, Will Power has been black flag. Now, I think probably what Trevor's done is sent him out. He didn't take the grid, but sent him out as car number two is also heading out of the pits. That's uh, Meningello. But uh, that's probably the case, and, they, and maybe the rules don't allow him to actually do that in race one to get the extra practice he wants. Tocicello, though, will not be concerned with that. He comes across the line after 11 laps. And leads now still by 1.9 seconds. So it's not over by any means. Uh, a mistake could cause problems for him or a slow driver on the track that he can't get past. So he's got to keep his wits about him. Gomendy, Tristan Gomendy, car number 15. Third here last year, in fourth at the moment, but he's got to get past Kubica if he wants to finish there. KTR Racing, of course, are the Belgian team. Kurt Mollikens, a good driver himself in his day, and doing a very professional job. And of course, the Belgians definitely want somebody on the podium. If it's not a team, it's a driver. Yeah, we see it's a really big gap after Gomendy with uh, Portero. It's uh, six seconds behind uh, here, number four car. A uh, car in number in fourth position. Zuba continues to hold on to that per second place, and uh, well, he knows exactly what the scene is. He's got a 1.9 gap between himself and the leader, and at the moment he's done a good job of just extending that lead with him and Kubica. So the gap is uh, it's not getting bigger. Uh, Tocacello is not getting away, it's now 1.9 seconds. So across the line they come, the complete lap 12 of the 19. Seven laps remaining and 121.7. They're all on similar times. Kubica slightly faster that time at 121.5. So that gap that we were just talking about, which was stationary, could be getting lower now between him and Zuba. It's a really big fight for fifth position because uh, there everybody is together. And we see also they lost four seconds in one lap because they were so holding on to each other. No change down the order. 20th place at the moment, Vervich, the young 18-year-old from Belgium in his first ever single-seater race of any real consequence. And uh, this is a real baptism of fire for him and he's doing a good job. He's a lap down, but he's in 20th place at the moment. So battles further down the field. That's the Pons racing, Adrian Valles, by the looks of things. Yeah, here we see the, the fight for fifth position. The first car is a Portero in fifth position. Then sixth we see Valles. And then the man who is pushing is uh, Montanari. He's really close. He's... And here is our leader, Tocacello, is coming. And just finished lap, six laps to go. Well, of course, Cedric Valles, 10th last year in the championship in the World Series by Nissan. Six laps to go then. Tocicello, Zuba, Kubica, Gomendi, Portiero and Valles, who we were just talking about holding off Montanari at the moment. Fakuda still in eighth position. And Peguignot of France in ninth. Pile France, so we've got a bunch of Frenchmen out there in ninth, tenth and eleventh place. Gomendi is really holding on and putting still some pressure on Kubica. It's from a little bit further down, but Kubica knows that he's not allowed to make a mistake. But Kubica at the moment is more busy with second position than uh, with lo losing his position. So uh, it's uh, quite a tight fight uh, in front. Yeah, you get the feeling with so few places to overtake that uh, the best tactic, I suppose, would be to get as close as you can if that's if it's possible and then try to force the man in front of you to make a mistake under braking into one of the chicanes or the last uh, last chicane and uh, I think that will be the tactic for Kubica in the closing stages of this there's still enough time for him to uh, make a move for sure Tocicello though at the moment running away with this the pole man did a good job of getting away from the start he comes across the line and all holding station hit. the gap has gone up to just 2.1 seconds so it's pretty stationary 
coming out of the pits there. I think that was Winkelock who just came out of uh, the pits. So Winkelock back on, on track then. Let's have a look at this, the gap. Tocicello and Zuba and that faster lap by Tocicello last time out. It's just given him a little bit more of an edge. A little bit surprised to see Eric Salignon down in 17th position. Likewise, Milos Pavlovic of Yugoslavia down in 18th position. And by the way, I say he's from Yugoslavia. He wants to be known that he's from Yugoslavia. His parents are from both sides of the tracks, as it were. And he says, no, nope, I'm from Yugoslavia. Yeah, we see uh, Winklehock uh, behind this group the first four cars and he's on, on fresh tires and he's just trying uh, to sort this car out for the next race because that's of course important he's uh, in front for the next race as well yes of course another race coming up and that's another thing about keeping your car tidy without getting into too much incident because of the whole new race yet to go 23 laps of that with a pit stop as well 15 of the 19 gone then, Topicello from Zuba, 2.2 the gap, Kubica just a second behind him, then Gomendi, Portiero and Vales, and that battle isn't over between uh, Portiero, Vales and Montanini either, uh, just a second between them, no movement in the top 10, Kuda having got up to 8th position has dropped down to 9th now, and behind him Pile Passini and Guez Chandok still there in 13th position ahead of Koska. Uh, Maldonado in 15th place, Montini, who said the V6 champion from last year, has moved up to 16th place, Salignon behind him, Pavlovich in 18th position, Van Lagen still running, but in 19th position, and somebody stranded on the circuit, that's Mavesh, I think, it is. So welcome to international racing at the highest level, Mavesh of Belgium, the local man, looks as though he stalled that car in the middle of the track, and that could actually bring out a safety car see if you can get it going because that's in a precarious position luckily there's plenty of view and vision for the other cars the marshal's doing a great job of making sure everyone is aware four laps to go then Enrico Toccicello from Rome says his football team's not doing very well so he has to make amends by doing well on the track he's doing a good job so far and Toccicello of course will also be looking good he's second on the grid for the second race uh, behind uh, Will Power and Yat Van Lagen behind him Adrian Vallas in fourth place for the second race so Tocicello headed for a good weekend if he can hold it all together Justin Gomendi the Frenchman using the track and getting very dusty getting those tyres dirty you don't want to do that too often because uh, well getting up to the mutt like that can soon throw you off if you're not ready for it Somebody else has thrown themselves off. And that is Maldonado, having spoke so highly about him. The dams driver is off. And, uh, well, <laughs> Jeffrey, yeah, now what are you going to say? Here's what happened. Well, I think that is a case of what I was just talking about, getting onto the dirty part of the circuit where it's dusty. You can see how much dirt is here. And that dust then settles. And I think that was a simple case of it just ran out of grip, didn't it? Yeah, he did a little bit. Uh, we see yellow flags now in turn number one, of course. Uh, yeah, we saw, I think he just braked a little bit too late at the first corner. First corner braking is a little bit bumpy and tricky. For sure, with the tires going off right now, here we see the small bumps. On TV, it's small bumps, but in That's reality, big. it's yeah. uh, our big bumps. So, uh, it's tricky uh, when you come there to watch the end of the race because the tires, they go off uh, quite hard at these uh, temperatures. Time running out then, Toccicello leads the way. The gap is 1.8 seconds, so Zuba has caught just somewhat in the last lap or so. He put in the quickest lap. In fact, Zuba and Kubica were the fastest men out there, and likewise Gomendi. And we've just seen a best lap of 120.1, so Will Power is out there on track. And it'll be very interesting to see whether he does pick up the point for fastest lap because as we saw earlier they were waving a black flag before we saw Trevor Carlin going out there. We'll get the full story on that. And uh, I think he, he put it uh, when he was uh, getting the black flag. He, you can have three laps black flag and then you really need to go off because otherwise uh, 
you get uh, disqualified of the event. So, uh, well, we'll find out whether he gets the point or not. But uh, he has put the fastest lap in. But Tocicello, meanwhile, has got a lap or so to go uh, to hold off Zuba and Kubica. We see uh, Winklehock. Winklehock, course. yeah. He's catching uh, the guys because, yeah, he's got fresh tyres. He, he didn't do, well, both uh, Will Power and Winkle Hot with fresh tyres, of course. Last lap, though, for Toccacello. Enrico Toccacello of Italy leads Zuba and Kubica. This is the first race of the World Series by Renault here in Zolder in Belgium. It's been a brilliant weekend so far by the young Italian. Runner-up in the International Formula 3000 Championship last year. And with a great opportunity to really make his mark on this season right from the very start. Andrea Zuba tried from the outset, from lap one, to get past, but he just couldn't. He's held off Kubica well, though. Robert Kubica, one of the favourites, coming in to the start of this season. And Tristan Gomedy, third here last year, in fourth position at the moment. Just a few corners then for Enrico Toccacello. Yeah, he's not going to catch the back marker, so... Uh... Yeah, that was a concern because there's just no way they can get out of the way quick enough, I don't think. Here we come in the tight corner, and then we have the small straight towards the last corner. We see also Kubica is still holding on. It's really tight for that second position here. So just one corner and away he goes. Toccacello, Enrico Toccacello from Rome in Italy takes victory for Victory Racing. The first, he hopes of many. What a great start to his campaign in the World Series by Renault. He was pole position, he held off Zuba at the start and he never looked back. He held the gap between the two of them. Uh, when he thought he was being caught, he just upped the pace somewhat. And that was a full control effort by Toccacello. Yeah, Very nice, professional. Really nice driving from Toccacello here in Zolder. But also Zuber did a really nice job holding off Kubica because Kubica was a little bit quicker towards the, the end of the race and also in the beginning, but uh, Zuber didn't, uh, he was not stressy, he, he was just cool and did his drive towards uh, second position really nice. Now the question is, can he do it again? Look how much dust is on the track and I don't think I'll get a chance to clean it much as the afternoon continues because there's so much going on on this World Series by Renault weekend and it really is a, a full weekend of racing of all sorts and entertainment of all sorts for the crowd and uh, they have been given a treat a massive crowd here at Zola and I haven't seen the likes of this and you race here a lot uh, have you seen a crowd this big in a long time no it's uh, really no spot where you can uh, still look at the track every spot is taken so it's really nice for the organization we see uh, in fourth position Gomandi, who's really nice, coming from nine to fourth. Yeah, that's finished. probably the best drive of all, and he got it all at the start almost. Yeah, yeah, three seconds, uh, he finished three seconds from the leader. And then we have Potero in fifth and 15 seconds, so it was a really big fight for that fifth position. Uh, all drivers, uh, four drivers all together there in a few seconds. So it's, we see it's really difficult to stay close to the car in front uh, to, towards the, um, those quick corners. So we have some few quick corners here in Zolder and then it's always really difficult to finish close. So final results then, victory engineering, Enrico Toccacello of Italy taking the victory over Austria's Andreas Zuba. Kubica third, Gomendi Potiero Valer of Spain for Pons Racing, Cito Pons team, of course champions. Emian Hassini in 11th place, Celso Miguez, 12th. Karun Chandok, good effort by the young Indian getting up from 23rd all the way up to 13th. Montini, the V6 champion from last year, disappointed in 16th place just ahead of Pavlovic. Milos Pavlovic in 17th place. Then Van Lagen, uh, who had the fast slap for a while, but uh, the Dutchman finishing 18th position and Vavish was able to get back on track and finish 19th. And in terms of the championship overall standards, Valles, so you see, in sixth position. But of course, Toccacello is the man of the moment. Having had pole position and that victory, he has a clear lead now. The points, 15 for first place, 12 for second, 10 for third, 8 for fourth place, and 6 points for fifth place and on down. 
In terms of the team standards, Epsilon Uscardi leads the way, just one point ahead of Victory Engineering. So overall, an important battle, Epsilon Uscardi, one of the forerunners, of course, of the World Series by Nissan, a very professional outfit, and they lead by just one point. Solonair Racing getting up there. But um, it's going to be an intriguing year, and as we look at the tracks ahead, and I know that uh, well, I'm sure you would love the idea of uh, racing at Monaco. Everybody would, in front of all the team managers. It's a great chance, and as you said, uh, they won't be far off the Formula One times. And uh, let's take a look at the highlights. But this is where the weight race was won and lost. Tocicello having to defend his position against Zuba, who got a better start. And if Zuba could have held that line and Tocicello wasn't going to defend it, then Zuba might have gone around the outside. But he did well and uh, defended it well, didn't he? Yeah, it was really nice driving from uh, Tocicello. It was, uh, he was protecting his line, but uh, still uh, nice enough. The gap was about two seconds throughout most of the race. We thought that Robert Kubica might make a challenge on Zuba, but uh, Zuba did a good job, actually, uh, because he was under a lot of pressure for quite a few laps and uh, didn't make any mistakes. And that's the key in this form of racing is, is, is to eliminate all possibility of mistakes. If you do that, you've got a good chance. Shot of Winklehock there, who had a bit of a... He's had, a, he's had a bit of a, an up and down weekend as Marcus Winklehock, who came, of course, from DTM last year. But, uh, well, we'll see him again in the second race and maybe he'll have a better result in that. Yeah, it was a pity because he started third and he was, uh, he was good in, uh, in third position. But it was a pity from uh, Jaap from Lager who, who pushed him off in the, that tight corner. Well, ironically, he qualified second ahead of Zuber, in fact. But uh, they docked him a position for overtaking under yellow. There's the podium then. Got the at Zuba and Kubica. Three different countries represented in this truly international field of up and coming drivers. And you get the feeling that uh, it really is the beginning of a new era. 3000 was around for a while, now there is GP2. Heike Kovalainen, last year's champion, he uh, is already winning in, in that category. But uh, I've always wondered why there hasn't been more racing, and I'm delighted that we've got. A series just underneath Formula One where the real cream of what comes out of uh, Formula Renault, Formula 3, etc. get a chance to shine. Um, they've, <laughs> all of you have spent most of your waking hours dedicated to, to building up sponsorship and learning to drive cars. And, and this sort of championship gives you a chance to actually show that your talent off. Yeah, yeah I'm really happy for Tocacello because he's, uh, he's a driver uh who's got a lot of experience and you see that the good drivers, they will always find uh, a drive and um, it's really nice that he's, he's up there and uh, also with the team they did a nice effort because in testing they were, they were struggling, uh, in winter testing they were struggling to, to get in front and uh, they sought it out for here in Zolder and uh, with victory, well, it's a really nice job they did. Well, Tocacello says that his favourite driver and his favourite track is Ayrton Senna and Monaco. Monaco's next for him. And if you can emulate the great Ayrton Senna, he'll be doing good. But uh, that is a, that's an ominous thought when you consider how well he drove here at Zolder this afternoon. Monaco, of course, the next round. Let me take a look at Robert Kubica. Yeah, I was, uh, I was last year with uh, Tocicello in, in Monaco in Formula 3000, and uh, he was second on the grid and finished second. I was uh, fourth on the grid, and uh, we came close in the first corner. It's, uh, he's got a lot of experience there, so he's going to be... Uh, a driver to, to watch out and he's going to have a big advantage on the other drivers because he knows the track uh, really well already from a few years, 3000. How will it compare driving this car compared to the 3000 around Monaco which is such a tight surface? Yeah, this car is going to be much quicker, uh, the tyres are better, it's got much more downforce so in Monaco they will, the drivers they will put their cars in full downforce position so they're going to be really uh, flat out to the casino corner and uh, the tunnel they're going to be, uh, the tunnel will pass around uh, 270 kilometers an hour. So um, they're going to be really close to Formula 1. It's going to be interesting.